Welcome back. Today we are going to connect to our Electrum server, remotely. It's gonna be so cool. But first, let's recap. I started with a Bitcoin Core client installed on a Linux machine. We built and synced, an Electrum server next to it. To test it, I downloaded an Electrum wallet and successfully connected it to the server, at 127.0.0.1. A self-referential IP. Meaning. At my local host. We set the server to listen on port 50001. Which is where the communications with any client wallet occur. Unencrypted. Your computer is probably sitting inside a local network. Connected to a router whose firewall allows incoming traffic only to ports. 80 and 443. HTTP and HTTPS protocols, for simple web browsing. So you're probably okay, and you are not exposing your open port 50001, to anybody. But perhaps you don't trust your router, you want to avoid anyone else connecting to your server, or just want to make sure no one sniffs around your machine. Then, a simple firewall is the way to go. If your client wallet is in the same machine as the server, you don't have to advertise the fact that you have processes listening on any port. So let's go, and set up a firewall. First, I will start Bitcoin Core and let it catch up with the network. Right. Now I am going to set up, the uncomplicated firewall, UFW. The syntax to add simple rules for allowing incoming connections to specific ports, is very simple. I will add, two new rules, allowing incoming traffic to ports 80 and 443. If you're using default ports, you can usually type the standard protocol acronym instead, such as, HTTP, for port 80, HTTPS, for port 443, SSH, for port 22, and so on. The uncomplicated firewall comes pre-installed in Linux Ubuntu, but it is disabled by default. Let's enable it, and list its managed rules. Everything is correct. Our firewall is up, and our machine is only reachable at port 80 and 443. Now, we are going to access the server, remotely. Meaning, that we are going to run Electrum Wallet in a different computer, but still inside our local network. Since our traffic is going to be accessible to every single device connected to this network, we will use SSL to encrypt our communications. SSL and TSL are protocols that provide encrypted connections and authentication between computers in a network. They operate by standard public key cryptography, where the server shares a public key, derived by a private key. Moreover, there is an additional signature, typically made by a publicly trusted certificate authority, that validates the domain and identity of the server. We will not care about this part. We will sign our own certificate. The reason we use SSL, is that we need a web server to manage communications between Electrum server and Electrum wallet. And web servers of course, are designed to deal with SSL since their main use case is to host websites. So why a web server? Because it can listen for encrypted SSL traffic coming from a remote machine, and forward it to a local server that listens for unencrypted traffic. In other words, the web server listens on its own port, 50002, and establishes an SSL encrypted connection with an Electrum wallet, running on a remote computer. Then, it acts as an intermediary with the Electrum server that listens on port 50001 for unencrypted traffic. This configuration is called a reverse proxy. I will be using the web server Nginx. Okay. So first I will create the SSL key pair for the web server. The SSL keys and certificates are stored in etc SSL. The first directory holds the SSL certificates, which include the public key, the signature from the authority, 
and some fields that you can fill in when you create the keys. The second directory holds the private keys. You need to be root, to access it. Now I will create my SSL credentials, in one single long, open SSL command. I will explain as I go along. I want, an X509, certificate signing request, made by a 4096 bits RSA, newly minted, private key. The certificate will expire in a year. Both private key and certificate will be stored in etc SSL. I will name the files Nginx. I am not interested in providing a passphrase for the private key. And I don't want to add additional fields to the certificate, such as name or country. I only want to specify that the local host is my desired domain. Done. We have an SSL certificate which includes the public key, a self-signature, and the local host as the domain. The private key is also there, believe me. Now let's install, Nginx. The Nginx configuration file is at etc nginx to use nginx only as a reverse proxy i will overwrite the default config file with one that i already have with most of the fields filled in i only need to specify the path to my ssl key and certificate before saving and exiting please notice this directory which we need to create. We need to write a configuration file that will enable Nginx reverse proxy to add SSL encryption to the Electrum server communication. I already have it. Let's look at it. Try understanding it. Remember this? We are done. You can test the Nginx configuration, with the option, T. Everything seems ok. So now reload or restart the web server to apply the changes. And let's see if it's running properly. One final check. The following command, will show which processes are listening, on which ports. Nginx, listening on port 50002. Now let's start the Electrum server, and run this command again. Electrum server, listening on port 50001. Before I move on, to another computer in my local network. First I will try to run Electrum Wallet here, on the same machine. But instead of connecting straight to the Electrum server, on port 50001, I will go through the web server, and use port 50002. This is very important. If I'm connecting to a server that requires the use of SSL certificates, I need to add the letter, S, instead of the letter, T, which we discussed in part 1 of this guide. Syncing. And it works. Now it's time to move computers. Before I do that, I need to know the IP address of this machine where the Electrum server is running. 192.168.1.92 Since Nginx is listening on port 50002, and now I will access it from a remote computer in my local network, I need to add a rule to my firewall, for allowing incoming connections on that port. With the following syntax, 
I will allow incoming traffic to port 50002, only, from my local network. We are set. Let's go to another computer. This machine's IP address is 192.168.133. I already have downloaded the Electrum wallet. Let's try connecting it to our Electrum server. Success. Let's go back to our server. To end this guide, I am going to connect to my Electrum server from outside my local network. Over Tor. To do this, I will set up a hidden service on the server machine. If you want to learn more about this, please watch the video I link in the description, where I explain what everything means. Now I will go straight to creating a Tor hidden service for our Electrum server. Done. I will write the onion address into a file and save it into a USB drive. I will keep my server running here at home and leave for another country. How about my trusty computer in Russia? To try to connect to my server over Tor, I need to have the Tor daemon installed. And, I need to know the address of my hidden service of course. I brought the USB drive with me. I already have downloaded the Electrum wallet. Follow the syntax. To route my traffic over Tor, I need to add the option proxy followed by SOX5 colon 127.0.0.1 colon port 9050. It works. The blue light indicates that we are connected to an Electrum server over Tor. I told you this was going to be cool. So now you don't have any excuse. Never give your public keys to anyone ever again. Until next time.